Today, we're going to focus on solving word problems that deal with Venn diagrams containing three categories. So let's work on this problem. In a certain class of sophomores, 46 students are studying algebra, 39 are studying biology, and 37 are studying chemistry. 17 students are studying algebra and bio, 15 are studying bio and chem, and 18 are studying algebra and chemistry. Now 10 students are studying all three courses and 18 students are studying neither algebra, biology, nor chemistry. Part A, how many students are studying algebra and biology, but not chemistry? So we're gonna have A for algebra, B for biology, C for chemistry. Now the first thing that I like to do is I like to fill in this middle part here. That represents the students taking all three courses. And that is, so we have 10 students who are studying all three courses. So we're gonna put a 10 here. Now the next number I'm gonna focus on is this one. 17 students are studying algebra and biology. So where is that on a Venn diagram? So this part right here, highlighted in blue, that represents all the students who are studying algebra and biology. Now we have 10 who are studying algebra, biology, and chemistry. So 17 minus 10 will give us seven, and that's the answer for part A the number of students who are studying algebra and biology, but not chemistry. So we have 17 who are studying algebra and biology. Out of that, 10 are studying algebra, biology, and chemistry, but only seven are studying algebra, biology, but not chemistry. So the answer to part A is seven. Now, what about part B? How many students are studying biology and chemistry, but not algebra? So we're looking for this section here. This is biology and chemistry, not including algebra. So let's look at this information. We have 15 students who are studying biology and chemistry. So this part here is biology and chemistry. If we take the part where we have biology, chemistry, and algebra, we'll be left with this part, which is biology and chemistry, but not algebra. So if this whole thing is 15 and this part is 10, 15 minus 10 is five. So this section here, we have five students who are taking biology and chemistry, but not algebra. So the answer to part B is five. Now let's move on to part C. How many students are studying algebra and chemistry, but not biology? So we have this information. We know that 18 are studying algebra and chemistry. So that includes, that's this whole part right here. Out of the 18 who are studying algebra and chemistry, 10 are studying algebra, chemistry, and biology. So 10, 18 minus 10, that's eight. So we have eight who are studying algebra and chemistry, but not biology. So we're gonna put an eight here. And that's the answer for part C. Now part D, how many students are studying algebra only? So this circle represents all the students who are studying algebra. This part here represents the students who are studying algebra only, or the students who are studying algebra, but not biology and not chemistry. So how can we get that number? Well, we know the total number of students who are studying algebra, that's 46. So if we take 46 and subtract it by these three numbers, we're gonna get the number of students who are studying algebra only. 
So 46 minus 7 minus 8 minus 10, that's going to give us 21. So we have 21 students who are studying algebra only. Part E, how many students are studying biology only? So the total number of students who are studying biology is 39. So I'm going to put that here. So this is 39. We have a total number of 46 students studying algebra. And we have a total number of 37 studying chemistry. So to get biology only, it's going to be 39 minus these three numbers. So 39 minus 7 minus 10 minus 5. So that gives us 17 students who are studying only biology. Now what about F? How many students are studying chemistry only? So we're going to follow the same process. We're going to take the total number of students who are studying chemistry minus those three numbers. So 37 minus 8 minus 10 minus 5. So we have 14 students who are studying chemistry only. Now what is the total number of students that were surveyed in this class of sophomores? So what we need to do is add up all the numbers, including the students who are studying neither algebra, nor biology, nor chemistry. So we have 18 students who are not studying these three classes. So we got to put them on the outside. So to get the total number of students who are surveyed, we're going to add up all of these numbers. This represents all the students who are taking algebra, biology, and chemistry, plus those who are not taking those three classes. So it's 21 plus 7 plus 8 plus 10. That's 46 plus 5 plus 17. That's 68 plus 14 plus 18. So that's 100. So we have 100 students who were surveyed in this class of sophomores. Now, here's a side question for you. How many students are taking algebra or biology? How many students are taking algebra or biology? So let's think about what that means. So the students who are taking algebra and biology, that's the intersection of circle A and circle B. So we have 17 students who are taking algebra and biology. But what about the number of students who are taking algebra or biology? So this would include the inner, not just the intersection of A and B, but all, everything that's in A and B. So basically, all of these six numbers would represent the number of students who are taking algebra or biology. So all the numbers in A or B. So that's 21 plus 7 plus 8 plus 10. That's 46 plus 5 plus 17. So we have 68 students who are taking algebra or biology. Now let's say if we want to find the number of students taking biology or chemistry. So that's going to be any number in circle, well, all the numbers in circle B or circle C. So I'm going to highlight it in red. So these six numbers are found in B or C. So it's 7 plus 17 plus 10 plus 5, which is 39, plus 8 plus 14. So we have 61 students who are taking biology or chemistry. Now let's work on another problem. In a group of 150 students, 57 own cats, 73 own dogs, and 54 own parrots. Let's go ahead and put this on a Venn diagram. Let's put C for cats, D for dogs, P for parrots. So we have 57 who own cats, 
73 students who own dogs, and then 54 who own parrots. Now 26 own cats and dogs, so that's this part here. 27 own dogs and parrots, and then 20 own cats and parrots. Now we have 27 students who own neither cats nor dogs nor parrots, so we could put that on the outside. How many students own cats, dogs, and parrots? So we're looking for the intersection of all three. We don't know that, so we're going to call that x. Now we know this value here. The number of students who own cats and dogs is 26. So if this is x, this part has to be 26 minus x. Now we have 27 who own dogs and parrots. So that means 27 minus x represent those who own dogs and parrots, but no cats. Now 20 own cats and parrots. So 20 minus x own cats, parrots, and no dogs. Now we have 57 who own cats. If we subtract 57 by these three, we're going to get those who own cats only. So let's do that. Let's get that in terms of x. So 57 minus this part here, that's 26 minus x minus x, and then minus this part, 20 minus x. So let's distribute the negative sign. So we have negative 26 plus x minus x and then negative 20 plus x. We could cross out x and negative x. So we have 57 minus 26. That's 31 minus 20. So that's 11. So we're left with 11 plus x. Now, let's find the number of students who own dogs only. Let's get that in terms of x. So it's going to be the students who own dogs, which is 73 minus these three values. So that's 26 minus x minus x minus 27 minus x. So that's 73 minus 26 plus x. The two negative signs will cancel. And then minus x minus 27 plus x is again. So those will cancel. So it's going to be 73 minus 26 minus 27. And so that's going to be 20 plus x. To get that answer the quick way, all you got to do is just subtract 73 minus 26 minus 27. And then you can see these two will cancel. And then when you do 73 minus negative x, you know, that becomes 73 plus x. And then subtracted by 26 and 27, you get 20 plus x. So we'll do that for the next one. So the next one is going to be 54 minus 27 minus 20. 54 minus 20 is 34. 34 minus 27 is 7. These two will cancel. 7 minus negative x will be 7 plus x. So that's what's going to go here. That'll save you some time if you need to complete this problem quickly. So now we have a total of 150 students. If we add up every section, in addition to 
those who own neither cats, dogs, nor parrots. All of that highlighted in blue must add a 150. And that's how we're going to solve for x. So 150, I'm going to have to write it here. This is going to equal 11 plus x plus 26 minus x plus 20 minus x plus x plus 20 plus x. Let me put this in parentheses so you could see uh, what's what. And then plus 27 minus x plus 7 plus x. Now we don't want to forget the 27. So we also got to add plus 27. Now let's simplify. x and negative x will cancel. Negative x and x will cancel as well. And these two will cancel. Now let's combine like terms. We have 11 plus 26, that's 37. 37 plus 20 is 57. Plus another 20, that's 77. Plus 7, that's 84. 84 plus 27, that's 111. Plus another 27, that's 138. And then plus the remaining x that we have left over. Subtracting both sides by 138, 150 minus 138 is 12. So x is equal to 12. So now we can replace this x with 12. And this part, this is 20 plus x. But I'm going to try to write it in blue. So 20 plus x, that's 32. 26 minus x, so 26 minus 12, that's 14. 11 plus 12, that gives us 23. And 20 minus x, 20 minus 12 is 8. 27 minus 12, that's 15. 7 plus 12, 19. So now we have everything that we need. So part A, how many students own cats, dogs, and parrots? So we know that's x, that's going to be 12. Part B, how many students own cats and dogs but no parrots? So this is the number of students who own cats and dogs, which is 26. But this part here is cats and dogs, but no parrots. So we have 14 students who own cats and dogs, but no parrots. How many students own parrots only? So that's going to be this number, 19. Everything that is in this region. Parrots, no cats, no dogs. So we got 19 students who own parrots only. And then D, how many students own cats or parrots? So that would include these four numbers. Everything within the circles of cats or parrots. So that's 23 plus 14 plus 8 plus 12 plus 15 plus 19. So we have 91 students who own cats or parrots. So that's basically it for this video. So now you know how to solve word problems associated with Venn diagrams.